I could really use your help on something. I am struggling to come up with a translation of John 3.16 that actually is an accurate translation of the Greek, but also is one that is not too jarring. We're so used to hearing, for God so loved the world. And then you start playing with everyone's favorite Bible verse, you're going to get in real trouble. Here's the problem. For God so loved the world. What does the word so mean? I've asked literally hundreds of people this question in classes and in conferences and all except one person and he knew Greek so that wasn't fair every other person said so means so much God loved the world so much the problem with that is that's simply not a possible translation of hutos the Greek word behind so it's simply not what the word means hutos means this is how And what John is saying is that this is how God loved the world. Uh, He showed it in that he gave his son. So there's no real question what hutos means. The question is, how do you play with the most famous verse in the Bible and come up with a translation that's accurate and also one that is not too jarring for people? You always have to be careful when you fool around with people's favorite verses. If you go to BDAG, the main Greek dictionary, it gives... Uh, the, let's just say the first three definitions are, are helpful. Number one is that hutos means referring to what precedes, and the glosses they give is in this manner, thus or so. The second definition is much like it. It says pertaining to what follows in discourse material in this way as follows. Well, John 3.16 isn't really discourse material, although that's where BDAG puts John 3.16. The third definition of hutos is a marker of a relatively high degree, meaning so. But go to the end of the definition. It's a marker of relatively high degree before an adjective or an adverb. Well, that doesn't apply to John 3.16 because that's not what hutos is connected to. Uh, They give four examples of hutos meaning so. And in Revelation 16.18, it was so tremendous was the quake. Are you so foolish? Galatians 3.3. 3. The sight was so terrifying. Hebrews 12, 2, uh, 21. And Paul says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the faith. Galatians 6, uh, Galatians 1, 6. Well, and when you look at those illustrations, it really shows that there's no way for hutos to mean so in that sense. So you cannot use definition number three. It's going to be definition one or two. If you look at some of the newer translations, you'll see some pretty bold translations, but they're bold because they're completely accurate. Uh, The NLT says, for this is how God loved the world, colon, he gave his son. CSB, for God loved the world in this way, colon, he gave his son. The Net Bible For this is the way God loved the world, colon, he gave. Now, those translations are all absolutely accurate. The problem with them is in public reading. It's, you almost have to say colon to make sense. And that's just, that doesn't work in public reading. Um, I am toying with this definition. For God loved the world, so he gave. It gets at the meaning. Um, It's really close to what the hutos means, and you keep the so in there so people aren't as bothered by it. So I'd be curious what you think of that. But now, if that weren't difficult enough, there's a whole nother issue, and that is the initial gar, for God so loved the world. Now, John 3, 16 starts a new paragraph, and if you know John's style, you know that what John does is that he'll start in a dialogue and then move into monologue. And at that point, he's more reminiscing on the words of Jesus. And so everyone in in the major commentaries knows that in John 3, 16, we've actually moved into monologue from dialogue. That's why I think everybody puts a paragraph marker at verse 16. So in what sense does gar mean for, given that context? Again, if you go to BDAG, uh, the main use of gar is a marker of cause or reason, for. And I think when you hear for, In English, that's about the only way you can hear it, that it's indicating here's the cause or the reason for something, A for B. So B is the reason for A. 
They have another definition as a marker of clarification. The gar can mean for or you see. Now, when I say that out loud, uh, you, you can get away with that. You can say, you see, or for. I mean, you, you can intonate it in such a way that you can get the idea of, oh, I'm going to be clarifying what I just said. Although I'm not really sure verse 16 is a clarification. It is at one level. So the question is, do you translate the gar with a word or do you let the punct, or is basically the punctuation, uh, the fact that you're starting a new paragraph, translate the gar? In other words, I'm not giving a cause or reason for something. I'm simply continuing to clarify or I should say just clarifying what I've just said. You see, <laughs> you see, four. See the problem? I'd really be curious to know what you think. And below this blog, there's a link to a SurveyMonkey uh, survey. And I would, I would really appreciate you taking the, the survey. It's free. It's not going to cost you anything. I'm not going to follow up with you. Don't worry. It's not a, I'm not a data gathering machine. Uh, but it's, I would be really curious what you all think is the right way to translate the first part of John 3.16. Really appreciate it if you take the poll. Thanks.